So welcome back. Uh, I said I would do a follow-up part two to my favorite cards. So it's a continuation from the little box that I have of all of the cards, you know, all those different uh, archetypes and themes uh, from my card collection that I, you know, I decide to separate out into special box. And so for part two, I want to continue on and uh, believe it or not, uh, one of my favorite was Gem Knights, and they, they haven't got, they've gotten, I think, what, one or two more cards, but, uh, I basically got up until, um, you know, uh, Diamond Lady came out, which was an awesome card that I love how in Arc V they, went back to Gem Knights with a specific character who plays those cards. So, you know, um, you know, she's awesome as a, as a monster and how it relates to the original, uh, fusion. Uh, but if I were to say what is on my actual favorite Gem Knight, it's actually Gem Knight Citrine because I like his effect where you can't activate, uh, any types of effects during the battle phase, uh, and if you were to replicate that with uh, Diamond, uh, it definitely is really cool. Um, I remember doing a meme about the fact that uh, Steven Universe actually had come out with, um, you know, essentially the same same concept of fusion with Gem Knights. And I thought that was kind of a, like, hey... People found out that there were actual Yu-Gi-Oh cards for this. That that would be like kind of a, uh, uh, a commonality between two big franchises. So, um, big fan of Gem Knights. I know they got like one or two more cards. Um, so that's that's something that I really like. Um, believe it or not, I do also have a. Uh, I actually was, I was thinking of giving this away to people, um, my Exodia. Now, these are not the original Legend of Blue Eyes Exodia. These are the reprints, and, um, you know, I, I never was into Exodia, but obviously if I was going to save something, I would definitely, of course, put um, one set of Exodia. So I do have um, these, these uh, hollow reprints of Exodia that... You know, obviously, you know, if, it's not going to be worth anything, but it'd still be kind of funny if I were to give this to somebody and say, well, if you want to get into the game, here, here, here's uh, the, the a full set of Exodia first. So, um, my next thing is uh, I, I was collecting all these hollow versions of Mirror Force, and I know there's been um, a new card called Mirror Force Launcher, uh, that came out um, that lets you search uh, regular Mirror Force. Uh, and I know I don't have Quaking Mirror Force. Uh, so that's the only one I'm missing. Otherwise, I have all the hollow versions of the, the, the Mirror Force cards. Um, and then if you remember from my numbers uh, box of my big collection of numbers cards, um, I, of course, have the all of the numbers gimmick puppet monsters um i don't have the link one and then there was i know there was another rank four exceed for um gimmick puppets don't have those cards and i know there was another good like continuous spell card that came up for gimmick puppets uh i am of course like i said to you before i'm a big fan of uh, give me a couple, it's at least from the anime, I know, of course, they're awful, um, in the TCG, but I love how, uh, you can play these cards, um, as a rank eight, like a dedicated rank eight, you know, uh, I know they come up with more cards where it's basically, you can definitely get all of these, uh, exceed summons or rank eights out, uh, no problem at all, so, you know, I, I'm missing so I'm missing some of the gimmick puppet cards, but it's something that I hope I can get, maybe in the future. Maybe somebody will give it to me as a as a wonderful gift of you know what 
what has advanced for gimmick puppets in the future. Um, so kind of going into my next couple of cards. Um, I am also a big fan of Katakuri. Um, I actually went and played Katakuri um, in competitions and uh, mainly as, you know, uh, kind of overextending my hand, basically coming out with four or five synchro plays in one turn. Um, even though um, Barreto is the worst um, of the of the synchro monsters, it's always my favorite because I like drawing cards, um, and I know what people like. Of course, is uh, Birai, which he has a great great effect of being able to change positions. Um, but I definitely play Karakuri in competitions uh, and actually did pretty well. <laughs> um, and I know they came out with uh, a couple of really good cards, but then I even love the upgrade of Barreto up to, I think it was like a level 10 Synchro, um, you know, and I I I played that on, um, um, you know, on the Switch but I don't have the actual card for the um, for the upgrade. So uh, another thing I'm looking forward to maybe if I uh, get to you know update or add to my collection. Um, and then something that I put in this box, which I don't actually I don't think I've ever played Black Wings. But I actually did get a lot of the Black Wings in those. There were all, Black Wings are in a lot of special sets, um, um, and I end up getting a lot of those. And you know, some of them are worth a good amount. Um, so like Chris the Dawn, and uh, I think Shura, uh, is it Shura or uh, Smoke? I think is the the other one that was worth something. So. Um, I, I actually have all of the synchros that came out in the main sets. Um, and I don't, I'm trying to remember if there were any more cards I didn't get, but here, here's, here's, as you can see, or steam the cloak. Actually this card, you know, when links, uh, link summoning came out, this card was obviously broken. I have tons, I had tons of these cards I actually end up during the, um, kind of when the link error came out and I was selling cards made a good amount of money with this uh selling selling this because I had like I think like a hundred of these or something like that um but as um when they when Crow made it into the um the new anime um I actually got all of those cards too and I actually like uh, the new synchros, uh, even though I, I hate the fact that they are treated as tuners, but, uh, I definitely like playing, um, at least on the switch, uh, all of the new ones. And of course I love this synchro right here. Um, obviously it's very popular because it, can, it can't be affected by, um, effects. So something that I liked, um, collecting and I, I think I'm only missing two cards of of the new ones, the new support that came up for Black Wings. Um, and then getting into, you know, the last of the cards I saved, uh, I played Fables in uh, only a few competitions. Um, they never really got a lot of support. Uh, so I have Fabled and The Fabled, and more so I played The Fable. And I actually did a uh, control deck uh, with this wonderful monster. And if you, it's all about controlling the size of your hand so that it's the same as your opponent, that you get to negate effects. I actually played a deck that, uh, you know, obviously would use things like Jar of Greed or a Geki Break so you can increase or decrease by one card. Uh, definitely an annoying deck, uh, but I also just love. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, the fabled monsters were really cute. So, um, so, and if I remember correctly, 
Well, with the obedience school, uh, the fabled is good, but other than that, there really has been not much support or new cards that came out with for fabled, um, or the fabled. Uh, so, eh, but still, uh, I I liked it when they came out, and of course, here's my fabled Grim Road, uh, which was very expensive when it first came out, but I had tons of them because. I had a lot of the Hidden Arsenal sets, um, boxes. So I had tons of Grim Rows in the beginning, and so I never really had to struggle to uh, either pull them or um, trade for them or buy them, whatever. So, um, And then the last kind of thing that I never really got into until the end of the anime for Zexel was the Gaga Ga set. And um, Gaga monsters I hated in the anime because I always thought they were kind of stupid. Um, but then when they had certain exceed monsters, like, of course, Gaga Cowboy, um, I definitely liked them. And then there were a lot of cards that came out that, of course, like, you know, like Gaga Sister, kind of like really cool artwork. Um, and course it kind of became broken because then you could do a lot of rank fours pretty easily so i i do have a lot of gaga cards of course i know they came out with a lot of new kind of gaga ga, do do all those you know multiple name ones that work with uh onomatopoeia um so you know i definitely did not like it when they came out in, in the anime, but then after the anime ended, then I kind of was like, oh, they're kind of cool. And of course, the, the ability to abuse the rank fours uh, was kind of kind of cool. So that's it. Uh, that's kind of all the cards I saved. Um, <laughs> probably not worth anything, any of the cards I told you about. Uh, none of them really are of any value nowadays. I know, like, numbers, uh, are not worth anything, because they've been reprinted like crazy, so I don't think any of the cards that you've seen in the two videos are, or three videos about the cards are worth anything. Uh, I do have cards that are worth something that I had, uh, stored away, uh, including cards from really old sets, like I said to you. Uh, Legend of Blue Eyes, but, um, you know, the ones I've shown you are more of, like, my own fan favorite that I like. Uh, some of them I brought to competition, some I have not, and like I told you, I've, um, for sure, definitely played Katakuri pretty heavily, um, for competition, which surprisingly was okay, just because, uh, you know, back then it was all about raw power, uh, and for people who didn't play a lot of removal, for example, believe it or not, uh, it was very easy for me to, to stack up wins. Um, but other than that, no, I haven't, I can tell you, um, it was more interesting to go to competitions and see them. And I actually had gone to some in which I decided not to sign up just because I was like, you know, what? I just didn't, I wasn't in the mood in the mood but then uh there were some in which i actually got to meet some top ranking players i did do one one um match with somebody i think he was like definitely normally in top five and uh he was a very nice guy um but other than that you know and with you know the time that i'm doing this video of course in kind of just referencing covid uh, in the last year, obviously, people haven't done in-person competitions, and they're just now starting up. Uh, so for people who are just uh, going back into competition or brand new players are interested, and one of the things I actually saw a video on TikTok that was really cool is that I, you know, a female player talked about going to her first competition and. That is something that I think will be very exciting is uh, having more player diversity at competitions because competitions themselves are not difficult. You know why? Because once people lose one match, uh, if it's Swiss style, they all drop out. So about 
60% of people drop out if they don't win their first match. So even though you may have never played before in competition, if you stick it out after your third match, you can actually, um, <laughs> believe it or not, you'll place very high just because you didn't drop out. You didn't, you know, so... Uh, for anybody who just wants that ego boost, like you're, you stayed through all seven or eight, nine matches in Swiss play. Um, don't ever drop out if because the people who drop out only think about oh I want to be number one and you know out of like a thousand something players you can only have one person who's going to be number one. But otherwise, uh, if you ever want to be in competition. Uh, just for the practice and, of course, endurance, because surviving or playing through seven or eight uh, matches in Swiss play is very taxing. And that was one thing I hated was how exhausting it was to go through um, all of day one uh, and possibly showing up for day two. Um, and of course, you know, obviously I'm not going to say that I showed up for day two a lot because I didn't make it that far, but just as even survive day one of competition is kind of difficult. So, um, if you're a person who's checked out my channel because you yeah, saw Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but then you're like, what the hell is up with this channel? Uh, this is just, uh, me sharing a little bit about myself. Um, you know, my personal card collection, uh, because I'm going to prison and this stuff is going to be stored, I hope to see it. I was toying with the fact that, you know, I have an older brother who does have a, a, a new baby. And I was like, oh, maybe he wants to play this. And my brother actually taught me how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So, um, he has his own son. Um, I think he's going to grow up to be a, <laughs> an otaku for one thing. So... I have no idea, but I said to my brother, if something happens where he needs to move my card collection somewhere and he decided he want to give it to his son for, you know, an inheritance from me, I said, absolutely, he can, he can give it to him. Uh, and then he would have all these cards from, like, I think I've told you, like, two sets before the end of Arc V... And then all the way back to Legends of Blue Eyes. Uh, so you'll basically have a lot of Pendulum, Exceed, you know, Synchro, Fusions, all that stuff. Uh, the only thing you would not have is Link Monsters. So, and of course, uh, that's probably the most important thing nowadays. But otherwise, yeah, no, I, this is kind of some of my personal interests. And I want to share that if... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to post any more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, but if I do, uh, hit the subscribe button um, and hit notifications. Maybe you'll see me talk more about uh, some of my favorite cards and uh, check check out my other videos. And I hopefully I haven't scared you off about the whole thing about prison, but uh, maybe I will turn the revolution in prison and get Yu-Gi-Oh! cards uh, uh sanctioned in prison so all right so i will talk to you guys later bye